Morning everybody, Byron here from ETA. So last night we did the foaming at the truck and everything. Got her looking all pretty, or did we? Actually we did. <clears throat> so in this episode, we're gonna get into the Batoka um, car polishing system. It's basically, it's a Roops, uh, I believe it's a Mark II uh, copy, not a big deal. But before we can do any uh, polishing, see she looks clean, She not actually hold on there we go you can see a little bit there there you go that's a better so it is clean but it needs to be decontaminated so you're gonna go ahead and get a clay bar some clay bar lube and I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that we'll be back okay so the first step you're going to take your brand new clay bar you're just going to work it out kind of in a disc it's a little bit hard to do that right now because i've only got one hand you're going to get clay bar lube or quick detailer or you can even use soapy water if you're really thrifty and in a pinch but this is i'm just going to walk you through the basic process give the panel a good misting because you want this thing wet <laughs> okay and you're just going to work it in a straight line back and forth it doesn't take a whole lot all right if you feel the clay bar slip without any resistance, that means the surface is more or less clean enough to do what you need. However, here, I don't know if that's transmitting through the microphone or not, but I'm catching a little bit of resistance. There could be some tar on there. It could be just, you know, a little bit of oxidation on the paint, whatever it is. There we go. But this is going pretty good. This part really doesn't take long. There's a lot of people that freak out about doing this on their cars, and I'm telling you, just don't. Just work it. Make sure that it stays lubricated. If you feel a point where you get friction, that is where you give it a little more love, like right here. Get a little side to side, a little up down. And you're just working it until the friction stops and it glides effortlessly over the top. That's it. That's how you know you're done. So you can see some of the crap that we've pulled out, but we've effectively done just about half our hood. You can see a little half and half. Still got a little mist over here, so we're gonna go ahead and use that rather than waste it. You can see here and here, here, I've got a little bit of resistance there. You don't wanna use pressure because you actually can damage the paint if you try to do it dry. There we go. That's a perfect example there. Just try to move it in straight lines. You're gonna find that that's a theme as we uh, go on this morning we actually get into the paint correction but you're just working it a little bit at a time until you get all the way around the vehicle my strategy is I'm gonna clay bar the whole front clip then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut the whole front clip and then I'm going to polish the whole front clip and I'm gonna seal the whole front clip take a little break but I'm just gonna work around the truck in sections like that I'll be back when I've done um, polishing out the front clip. I decided to just press on and do the entire truck. That is why you decontaminate before you try to polish. This, yeah, it's a big difference. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to the unboxing portion of this, which I'll also be releasing a separate video of, but you can just kinda, I'm gonna go ahead and back the truck out and I'm gonna wash it a second time. The next time you see it, she will be drying, but I'm gonna go ahead and start the polishing process at that point. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and foam it and wash it. Then we're going to pull it back in. She's all cleaned up, letting her dry a little bit. I'm going to go grab me a cup of coffee. I'll go ahead and pull her in. Big difference after the clay bar. I got all that contamination out of that paint. And there was quite a bit, especially as I moved towards the back. But yeah, big difference. Made a big, big difference. And everybody seems to always forget about the roof. I'm a truck in particular, but I got the roof pretty good too. So now, after... Foam, wash, dry, uh, decontamination with the clay bar, a second wash, we're ready. Got some little swirl marks in there that are not showing up right now, but that's also because it's wet. But trust me, they're there. I got some area here that I had to do the touch-up paint. You can kind of sort of see it. So we're going to try to get that blended in as well. Then we'll pull her in, and we'll start on the hood. And I'm going to work my way halfway of the hood this way. 
then this way, and then I'm gonna go half of the hood that way, and down that way. Then I'm gonna move up to the roof, and we'll be done. So this is the Potoka car polisher. This is how it comes packaged. And bam, pretty nice box. A little bit of reinforcement. Air freshener, you got some microfibers, which is cool. We're gonna set those off to the side. We're gonna use them later. Pretty decent selection of pads overall. Actually, yeah, that's pretty nice. That's actually really decent pads. And then you got your uh, cutting pad here. Selection of different bonnets for the pads. And then we have the machine. And this is essentially a copy of a Roots Mark I, if ever I've seen a Roots Mark I. And I've seen one, because I own one. This video, however, is not about that. Let's go. So it's got a good weight to it. You can see the counterweight to it. Um, I'm actually a heck of a lot more optimistic now. It's a 700 watt motor. 1,000 to 3,800 RPM. Pretty nice uh, pad. You've got the self-adhesive uh, self belt over there. You've got extra screws and washers, which is good. You've got your instruction manuals, your side handle, and a U-handle that I'm never going to use. Um, I'm kind of impressed. Let's go ahead and open it up and get this thing set up and then I'll show you how to do that. And before I forget, it does come with an extra set of brushes. That's what uh, those little guys are there. So you can actually service this motor, which is actually a sign of a pretty decent product. So what you do is you line up the pad. There is a cam at the bottom of it that it all goes into. You're going to hold it very still, and you're going to go ahead and run that bolt down until it's flush. Don't forget the washer. That's a Nordlock washer, so the teeth go towards the surface you want to lock. And then you go ahead and run that bolt in while holding on to the hook and loop base. And what that does is give you um, the stability you need, so you can go ahead and tighten that screw up. Pretty straightforward. Honestly, when, when you do it, it's it's kind of self-explanatory. The instructions tell you to hold it with a wrench somehow. Uh, you're obviously not going to squeeze a spanner or wrench back there. So, that's the way you install it. You just run that bolt in while holding the backing pad. Let's go ahead and get after it. So for the first cut, I'm going to go ahead and use the waffle pad. And then I'm going to use the flat pad uh, when I actually get to the polishing portion. Actually, you know what? I think I'll use the waffle pad for the polishing, and I'll use the flat pad for the cut process. That makes a little bit more sense to me. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use that pad there for the cutting. And then the white one is for the, the, the white fluffy one is for the actual um, polish polish. But when I use the cutting compound, which is part one, this is the pad that I'm going to use. Don't forget to prime the pad. Um, you can just go ahead and use detailer. Some people use a, a little bit of like deionized water or something like that. Uh, I just use detailing spray because that's what I have. So that's what we're going to work. So you take it like so. Get it here. And you just give it a good little slappy slap, make sure that it's going to stay in put. Put a couple dots here, cutting compound on, and just start going to town. So we'll be back when I get over at the car, or when I get back over to the truck, uh, I'll cut back in. I'm going to go ahead and do all the prep pad off camera, and then plug it in and get ready to rock. Alright, so just one thing I want to cover real quick. This is the lock button, and this is the power button. Okay? Um, if you hold this button and pop that button, 
the power button may actually stick on. So when you plug this thing in for the first time, give it a squeeze and make sure that this button isn't locked in. Uh, I just took a bath in uh, cutting compound. So don't be like me. So check that out. That's a 50-50. That side is done. Haven't touched this side yet, but you can see that is a huge difference. And we're only on the first step. Man, that's nice and slick. Can't wait to get to the polish part. That's my favorite part. So if you guys are curious, that thing will cut. It's got enough power to cut and cut very well. Just make sure that you get the, the pad prime properly. Make sure you use enough compound and send it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the front clip and then I'll show you a 50-50 between here so you can get a before, okay? That's, remember, this side is not done. On this side of the green towel, it is. Let's get it. Again, there's the 50-50. Let's check out the big reveal. Woo! Look at that. Bling, bling. So yeah, the Bakoda will cut as needed. If I were a uh, professional detailer, which I used to be at one point in my life, I'm not now. But uh, I wouldn't hesitate to purchase this as a first tool. Had pretty good results straight out of the gate. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it going. I've already done that. I just got to buff off the polish, but I'll show you the other side. Look at that. Take a look at those videos from before. Take a look at that now. And remember, this is just the cut stage. We still have the polish stage. So here we are. We've got it all cleaned up now. This, uh, the cut compound on the front clip is done. You can see this is done. This is not done. You want that little 50-50 there. Didn't take me very long. But now we're moving on to the polish step. We'll be back. Now we're done with the polishing step. Look at that. Look at that. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. And again, this is just the front clip that's done. That side's not done yet. That's one cut pass. And that's one polish pass. And I'm going to go ahead and finish my wipe down. And I'm going to seal it. So we are at 50% now. Everything from this tail light hood has been done on this side of the car. This is, I still haven't waxed it yet. This is just the cut and then the polish step performed. It kind of gives you an idea of the after. Whole hood is done. Now I still have to go back and, and do the little, you know, the bumper and stuff like that. But here, this side, this is where I stopped. All of this is original, if you will. So this side hasn't actually been cut or polished yet. I just want to show you that so you can kind of see that difference. You see I got some hard water spots and I mean you can see some of the swirl marks throughout the paint, which is normal. This is a 2018. And I haven't done anything here yet except that corner. So I guess if you want a 50-50, check that out. This thing is amazing. So this half is still not done. I'm just gonna go ahead and walk it. This is all done, by the way. So you guys can see the difference.
And again, this side here is polished. I just got the doors left. A little bit sunny out, a little bit hot right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it in. That way I'm not overheating the panels while I'm working. So the polish, the cut, the polish is done. This is the sealant applied and the wax. I'm using uh, Griot's Garage. So the whole front clip here is done. Got to wipe up a couple little areas. But here's your comparison. So this is the driver's side. Waxed. Sealed. Remaining. Luckily this is the fastest part of the whole job. So a couple hours, not a big deal. Polishing pads are decent. A little bit of panel wipe down left. Hope we're done. Gotta just whack the windows real quick because they're kind of. Yep, that's waxed, sealed, ready to rock. So after a good solid day's work, I don't have to touch this damn thing for at least a year. You can kind of see the gray color a little better now that I got everything fully uh, wiped down. But yeah, <laughs> I am uh, satisfied with that. It's kind of a cool color, isn't it? Because it's fun. Check out my palm tree.